Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're working on a very interesting RV, I really like it, or travel trailer rather, is an Intec Soul Rover. And uh, as you can see behind me, we got some Victron stuff, some batteries. We're gonna be putting it all in here. Uh, I'm gonna tell you all about it. So here's uh, the most of what's going in here. Uh, we got the batteries, I've already kind of placed them in there. These are some other batteries we're gonna be working on for an upcoming project. Uh, so we're going with the uh, 3000 Multi Plus, and uh, something I want to bring to your attention right away is when you're selecting these, if you are using a smaller RV like this or travel trailer, uh, go ahead and opt for the, a 30 amp one in particular, go ahead and opt for the 120 volt only version of this, and its connections are going to look like this, only three wire connections. Typically... Well, I'll go show you. I got one over here. Typically, they are a four-wire connection. All right? <clears throat> that is how the connections look on there. This is what's called a 2 by 120 version. And those are typically for 50-amp uh, coaches where you've got four wires, six, four conductors coming in. And that'll allow that to pass through properly. But they are a little bit more expensive. So if you want to save some money... You got a 30 amp trailer, get one of these. Yeah, I would say, I want to say it was about $100 cheaper. And you know what? When you're buying blue equipment and it is getting cheaper all the time, I don't know what's going on. Everything else in the world is more expensive, but this stuff keeps getting cheaper. So Victron Multi Plus, 3000. We are also going to be putting a uh, Lynx, or sorry, a VE Bus Smart Dongle. That allows you to control the AC input current limit and also monitor the functions of this inverter from your phone. Then we've got the battery monitor. This also connects to your phone and provides this little dial to show you what's going on with your battery, state of charge, all that kind of stuff. Um, this also has a little bit better Bluetooth range than the smart shunt. Then we're putting a uh, smart charge controller in here, the 100 by 50. Now, I made a little bit of a mistake. I actually quoted the customer a 100 by 30, but they're getting the uh, Soda Solar upgrade because Sean forgot to have those in stock. So uh, they are getting the upgrade to the 50 from the 30. And then of course, we're gonna do the Lynx distributor to keep it all safe, protected, and monitored with our LED uh, cable that we put in there. Let's show you what we got inside, how we're actually gonna do this. So uh, here is where this is going in this travel trailer. And we're gonna end up with two batteries in here, two of these SOKs, and it's gonna be a little bit of a snug fit, but I think it's gonna work out. I hope so, anyway. Um, oh, uh, I almost forgot. We need to talk about this guy right here. This is what I'm gonna be using for circuit protection uh, going forward, I think, as much as possible. And here's why. This is a built-in, basically a disconnect, shut-off, uh, circuit protection all-in-one. And it does up to 25,000 amps of interrupt on a single time or 15,000 amps interrupt uh, resettable. So if you don't know what that means, is circuit protection is important that it can interrupt a tremendous amount of amps. This can interrupt 25,000 amps safely. That is amazing. That's more than a class T fuse. So we're going to play around with these. We're going to see how this works. So the trickiest part of this so far has been, how do we get to the, to this uh, cable right here? So originally I was thinking about going through the floor, but instead we are going to go through this wall and up the fridge and then out here into this compartment. The reason why I didn't initially want to do that is this is an ammonia-based fridge, so there can be a possibility of ammonia leakage, but the customer preferred it this way, so this is the way we're going to do it. We did talk to him about the uh, issues potentially with that, but we will seal this bugger up as best as we can, and I doubt it will be a problem. So that's the plan there. Oh, and then the, uh, the BMV monitor is going to go right under here. That's our plan for that. Without further ado... Um, I'm going to go get back to work out there and I will catch up with you guys later. 
Uh, maybe I'll show you this a little bit later. Uh, this is actually going to be the solar for this. This is a 400 watt Renogy solar panel. When the customer told me, yeah, it's 400 watts right there, I didn't actually believe him. I didn't know Renogy made this. This is really cool. I'm excited to show it to you. Uh, we will show that when we, at the end of the video, when we test this. There's 400 watts in there. It's crazy. Uh, but that is going to plug in right here through this ZAMP style SAE connector. And uh, we'll go over how we do that as well. Like I said, we're going to get back at wiring this thing up over here. Well, it's a new day. Still some snow on the ground. But uh, we made some effort, some progress on the uh, rover here. Got uh, Bear keeping guard. How you doing, bud? Yep. Let me uh, show you what we got going on in here. This is uh, how I think we're going to have to lay things out. Uh, we're doing this battery position here to keep the uh, uh, to keep a little more space over here for some wiring. We'll see uh, how that turns out. And I'm going to fill that hole down there with some spray foam, most likely. And we started to run the AC line, you can see there. And you can maybe see what's going on in there. Uh, it's kind of tough. There you go. Got the hole drilled for our uh, BMV monitor. And uh, that's, that's kind of where we're at. I got to do more wiring here. I Sadly, I could not end up uh, doing a lot on the board on the workbench there. Oh, right. And the, and the links there. We actually have that connected up to power. This is the only way I could really figure out how to do it, so we're actually going to be doing a lot of wiring right here, bent over. Not ideal, but it's what we got to do to get the job done. Well, all right. It's uh, been a little bit of time. We've been hard at it. Uh, we're actually about ready to start buttoning everything up, so I figured now would be a great time to show you everything we've done up until now. <sighs> There's an airplane movie joke in there somewhere, if you're old enough to get it. Then you get it, but <laughs> uh, let's start with uh, what we got going on down here. So as you can see, we got the MultiPlus humming away. It's actually just starting the charge here. Uh, I got to do some wiring cleanup. Uh, we're hoping to use more of these raceways, but to tell you the truth, there's just not a lot of room for them. So uh, I'm going to try and get a cover on here. I'm going to have to do some cutting on it to make that work. I think we'll get a, at least parts of a cover on the bottom one there, but... There's just not a lot of room, so it is what it is. Um, but yeah, we'll go over all the connections here. So we've got uh, positive, negative on the multi-plus there. And uh, then we've got the AC in and out, running with the 10-3. Uh, uh, oh, the fan just came on. That's good. We're gonna be, we're gonna be doing some programming with that later. We're not there yet. Uh, and then we're running the VE bus dongle and that's important because that'll let us control the input current limit which was important because by default this wants to pull up to 50 amps from shore power I've got this connected to just a simple garage outlet so I knocked that down to 14 amps and it's charging the battery with that right now uh, speaking of the batteries we've got our two SOKs in installed. I still got to strap them down, but I do have a lot of this aluminum L bracket holding it all in place. I even got one back there. And the reason why we did this is because it's got this curved area up front and I needed some enough room to like get a wrench in here and all that. If, if that's going to be maintainable at all, which I would like it to be. And so that's not touching the fiberglass there at this point. And my plan is to do a ratchet strap all the way across these two. With all the supports I have in there, I think it's going to work just fine. I'm not worried about it. Uh, our main battery connections here. I did the heat shrink over these to keep that safe. And speaking of battery cables, we've got our uh, shunt over there. And then we've got our main disconnect and breaker all in one. This die hole 700 amp. We've been talking about that. Uh, so far, that's working really good. Uh, I plan on... Uh, well, you know what? Let's Before I get on what I plan on doing, let's talk about what else we got here. Then we also have the Lynx distributor that is uh, ready for its cover to go on here shortly. 
and we did the connections down here at the bottom where a lot of times we do the connections up here but this way that stays nice and protected there what I plan on doing here in a little bit and I think this is perfect now that this is running a little bit uh, we actually just got a FLIR camera in and I want to take a look at all of this with the FLIR camera to get a sense for how hot all this stuff gets one of the reasons why I wanted to move to this style of a breaker is the contacts seem a lot thicker than typical fuses are. All right, and up here at the breaker, real simple stuff here. Uh, this cord right here, I pulled out of the breaker and then uh, wire nutted and heat shrink tubed over it, uh, those connections. And then this continues on to the input of the MultiPlus and then we ran another line up and we'll show you this behind the fridge up here and that ran into the panel and then I wired that into where the old one used to be. And now everything on the panel works, even the microwave, things like that. And then also up here, we have the uh, the smart shunt. And look at that, we're pushing 107 amps in there. That's a great burn-in test for this to make sure nothing's getting too hot. And uh, so yeah, you can see, oops. That right there is where we came through the back wall of the fridge and we've got some conduit uh, kind of acting as a resistance to any rubbing or chafing on there. Is that a right word with wiring? Chafing? We'll, we'll pretend it is. How about that? Let's, uh, let's go take a look on the outside of the fridge so you can see how that worked and uh, what we got going on with the solar connection there too. This is the back side of the fridge at the bottom and uh, I've got some uh, black silicone sealant there that's sealing all that up and I actually put it inside the this uh, black conduit as well to try and seal all that up as much as possible. And we ran that up through here. And then I did the same thing there. We're sealed inside the conduit and on the outside to get that as sealed as good as possible. So uh, these are about ready to go back on. I just gotta trim off that uh, zip tie there. And then for the solar connection here, we just tested this a little bit ago. Uh, I did the SAE connector with the gender reverser and um, heat shrinked it on there. So it's kind of almost one unit. I mean, this is actually really hard now and it's kind of the way it's supposed to be. And then uh, here, of course, is that 400 watt solar panel. There's actually two sides to this and it folds out even bigger. It's getting a little late in the day now, as you can see, but uh, I'll put up a screenshot showing how uh, we had it out and we were getting uh, 370, 350 watts out of it, which is great for a good portion of the day. It's early April here in Minnesota. I'm actually really happy with these panels. I think we might do them more before we've sold people two of these, but tell you what, like this is such a great compact system. I really like it. I'll try and find these and put a link to them on the internet. Probably won't be a referral link. Renogy, hit me up. I would love to uh, partner with you on those. You know, be honest, not a huge fan of everything Renogy sells, but that, really like that. Uh, there's no charge controller built into it. It just feeds right into here. And the other thing I like about it is it runs at a higher voltage, just like these do. It runs at about 36, 38 volts. That's perfect. All right, hopefully uh, we'll see how this works. This is the flare camera here. And let's see how hot this guy's getting. Case on the inverter. Yeah, it's not that hot. Oh, look at that. It's like, I'm having way too much fun here. You can see the temperature on the cables. Let's see, how is this faring here? Anything getting crazy here? That's my hand for reference. All that's staying relatively cool. All right, we're in the home stretch here. We got uh, got that buttoned up. We got uh, some other things buttoned up there, the drawer put in. Got some wiring here to clean up. Um, but we've been charging for a while. I just finished up programming the MultiPlus. I also programmed this uh, little fan here. And I sealed that up with some uh, spray foam around that, um, just around that opening. And I programmed that fan to work with the K1 relay here. Let's zoom in. 
Suits is K1. You can program that to go on for a number of different conditions. What I do is I program it to go on when this fan goes on, that fan goes on. And you might think, that's a little tiny fan, does it do much? Um, I took the FLIR camera out there and it appeared to be doing quite a bit. Let's take a look. Here we're testing the fan output. We're definitely getting higher temps out of here. That's perfect. You can feel a little bit of air coming out of there. All right, it's been running for a little bit. We are up to in the 80s now. With the air coming out of there. Definitely warm. Let's see what it is on the inside. So with that working good, um, I think I'm gonna work on cleaning up this wiring, put the cover back on, and run this even some more. And uh, definitely a bit warmer. But... That little guy right there is at 10 something, but the walls itself are much more aren't much above 80, so I would say that's probably close to the ambient in there. Definitely see the heat leaking out as this thing's running. Here we are sometime later. It looks like the temperature has increased some. We're seeing as much as uh, 85, 86 almost. That's the air temp coming out. All right, it's, uh, it's about that time. Starting start to do a uh, final cleanup here. Let's go over uh, what we did. Everything's all buttoned up, all right? As good as we can get it. We got uh, our Lynx distributor there. We got our disconnect, we got our multi plus, got our uh, raceway covers on. That was a little tricky. First time we've ever done it that way, but hey, why not? Batteries are all secured down. Oh, there is one more thing I got to do. I got some covers I need to put over those cables. Uh, let me be right back. That's a lot better. That way the uh, positives and negatives, uh, you know, like a screw or something can't just fall on there and cause some fireworks. We don't want that. So the Batteries are pretty much fully charged at this point. Uh, we are good to button this up, clean up all of our mess in here, and call it a night. Well, thanks for watching this video. I would hope that you subscribe if you've watched this far. Uh, we're always installing solar on RVs, Class A's, uh, ice houses, food trucks, all kinds of different stuff. Uh, we also like to do experiments and other things with solar and Victron products. I'm hoping to get some videos out on uh, battery monitors and uh, conditioning your batteries, like we're doing right here a little bit, for your spring setup, uh, all that kind of stuff. Uh, would love to subscribe and have you along. Check out our playlists. Uh, we've got a couple on experiments and all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> enough about that. Uh, Thank you again for watching. Leave a comment down below and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.